The Tar Heels fall in the ACC championship and the dream of sweeping both conference titles is over. So the question now, where do you go from here? You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, folks. What's up? It's Saturday night, March 16th, 2024. Welcome into this live postcast edition of the Locked on Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shade, and you're joining us at the place to get your Tar Heels content every single day. Special shout out to all you everydayers out there and everyone joining us even after a difficult loss. So here's what we do. After a Carolina loss, instead of celebrating, we just simply call this a therapy session. And that's exactly what this is going to be. Therapy with good old Dr. Shade coming at you. Um, I, I hate that it is. I hate that it has to be a therapy. But look, we don't shy away from tough things, right? Like, that's weak. We come and we show up and we say, man, that's a tough loss. NC State won. What are we going to do now, right? Like, that's what you got to do. Um, notice also, I'm not wearing my black hoodie. It is off and gone. It's lost its magic. And so it will not be the Saturday outfit anymore. Trust me on that. Um, also, apologies for those of you watching. Uh, I know if you're listening to the audio version of this, you can't see it. But uh, it looks like I'm in jail or something. I'm just in my hotel room uh, at the Big 12 tournament. So anyway, score of this game, Carolina loses the ACC championship. 84-76 is the final. I guess it is hard to beat a team three times in the season after all. We joked about that after the Florida State game when Carolina made quick work of the Seminoles. Um, in all seriousness. We got to say congrats to NC State for recording a historic feat, becoming just the second team ever to win a conference tournament in a five games uh, in five days fashion. The other being the Kemba Walker UConn team that then went on to win the national championship. So, uh, I mean, you hate that it comes at the expense of the Tar Heels, but um, it is something that will now unfortunately be remembered. So here's what we'll do. We'll, we'll unpack this the way we always do. We're going to have four things for you and add read four more things, and then we'll go see what questions and comments there are. All right, here we go. Before we talk about the game, let me big picture this thing. This is the first thing we're going to talk about. This is your therapy with Isaac right off the top. Would it have been awesome to win the ACC tournament? 100%. At, th at this point, you get there, you might as well go ahead and win the thing while you're in the championship. But for me, and probably for you, the regular season championship means more. The sustained success across the course of a season, great, fine, whatever. Um, but the other thing is that the NCAA tournament also means more. So of the three things that matter, I, I'm always of the opinion that the tournament, the conference tournament is is the least important. Not that I I, I don't want to like mitigate it and pretend like I'm saying that because Carolina lost. Like I, I've always said that. I, no, it, it's again, I want to win it, but give me the regular season or conference tournament. Give me the regular season. Give me NCAA tournament success or conference tournament. Give me NCAA all the way. So let's just note note that. But all is not lost. Because the big thing that matters is the thing that's in front of us that starts next weekend. And that's what we got to look at now. You regroup, you refocus, you figure out what went wrong in this one. You figure out uh, how do we stop that from happening next week as, as you head into the NCAA tournament. And then also comes the question of the one seed versus the two seed. Obviously compounded because Iowa State pounded Houston on Saturday night. Uh, I, I was in the building to see it, and it was something. Uh, it stretched out to a 30-point lead. I think it ended just a little bit underneath that, but my goodness, Iowa State looked good. Here's the thing. I took a look at the resumes because I was curious. A after that, I thought, man, with Iowa State doing that, what if Carolina loses this basketball game? Will the committee um, switch that and, and put Iowa State as the one and Carolina as the two? Nothing's out of the realm of possibility. They very well could. But to me, as I look at those two resumes, Carolina is still the team with the better resume. They, It's just, it's close, but the Tar Heels have it. 
Um, Iowa State has the conference tournament championship, but not the regular season championship. Carolina has the regular season championship, but not the conference tournament championship. But when you look at the resumes, I think it's the Tar Heels. A lot of that, a lot of a lot of what we hear from the committee, a lot of times is um, non-conference strength of schedule. And when you look, uh, just go to Ken Palm. I'm doing it right now. You ready? Non-conference strength of schedule, Iowa State, 352. There's only 362 teams in Division I. North Carolina, 36. Those are the kind of things that matter to the committee. Um, so, like, uh, for example, they've played, like, nine or ten quad four games. For, anyway, so I ultimately think that Carolina's resume is better, and I do still expect them to be the one seed in the West Regardless, though, here's the good news. Carolina will start in Charlotte next weekend, playing Thursday and Saturday. Okay, let's get back into this specific game, the loss to NC State. Number two, North Carolina played tight in this game, and NC State played loose. It's so funny, or not funny. I mean, it's it's kind of like, I, I mean, funny in like a weird way. Um, Carolina had played with that sense of urgency that Coach Rob talked about earlier in the week, both against Florida State and against Pitt. There just didn't seem to be that out of the gate against NC State. And I, I don't want to say it's like out of not caring, but Carolina, who has so often been the aggressor this season, just simply wasn't in this game. They they didn't have the, the energy, the tenacity, the will, those kind of things. And NC State came out blazing, got up to a 10-point lead pretty quick. Now, here's the good thing for Carolina. NC State gets out to that 10-point lead. And I wrote in my notes, I've got it right here. Don't freak out. I, I, the, the thing I wrote is Carolina needs to trust their experience, trust the process, trust their legs. Um, like, keep in mind, you were down nine yesterday to pit and climbed all the way back and then kept working. And, and much to Carolina's credit in the first half, they didn't freak out. They, they just methodically worked their way back in. They tied the game on RJ's third three of the game. Um, ultimately took the lead. NC State got it back. But then um, Carolina took that halftime lead on that on that great pump fake from Cormac Ryan and buried that three for a 40 to 39 halftime lead. And so based on what you saw the night before against Pittsburgh, you're like, we've all seen it all year long. Carolina didn't play well defensively in the first half, yet they had a lead. And they shot 50% in the first half. So I'm thinking at halftime, you probably were too. Oh, Golden. You, you come out in the second half, you take care of business, you, you buckle down defensively, and you got this. It just wasn't there. Did not have that in this game, as Carolina has often had. They made a run, took a halftime lead, but then NC State was the dominant force in the second half. Um, to me, at, at times, it felt like Carolina looked more like the team that was playing their fifth game in five days. And I, I know that, you know, NC State had issues with some injuries and cramps and stuff like that, but um, they had enough fumes in the tank to make it work. And, and Carolina just didn't get there. Part of that was number three. I thought the Tar Heels settled a lot in this game, quite frankly, um, settled for shots too often. This was their, now I, I know Carolina was just trying to loft threes at the end. And so the, the number is inflated, but still go with me here. The second most three pointers attempted in uh, a game this season, 30 total. The only one that was more was 31. So this is just the second time all year. Carolina was above 30 um, three point attempts. That's just too many. And they only made eight of them. That's 26.7%. It was one of the few times this year one of the things that I think Carolina has done really well is that while RJ more often than not is, is the dominant force, the dominant factor for the Tar Heels, I thought there were times more often than we've seen this year where Carolina, the rest of the guys on the court would just kind of twiddle their thumbs and say, go ahead, RJ. You know, and I think he felt some of that pressure to it. It felt like what Carolina often did to Caleb Love last year, where they would just, all right, Caleb, go make a play and, and we're going to watch. And, and I'm not saying that was every possession or every time, but it just felt like there was more of that in this game than than we've had at times this year, both from the other players and then both uh, from RJ trying to feel that as well. So Carolina's going to need to get past that. Um, talking about settling, you know, I mean, you look at the free throws. Carolina took uh, 23 free throws in this game, made 18 of them. You, you like that? It's just uh, that that average is above their season average. 
but a lot of those free throws were down the stretch as the teams were kind of trading free throws. There weren't enough earlier in the game where Carolina should have been uh, uh, attacking. So for me, it's like, why not go to Armando Baycott more? I, I know that DJ Burns had a game. We'll talk about that in a second. But Armando, on, on Carolina's side of things, did very well for himself. Six of 10 from the field, 18 points. Keep giving him the ball and let him do what Burns did for NC State, either score or uh, distribute. There just wasn't enough of that. I, I, I don't understand why there wasn't more like, if I'm the Tar Heels, I'm involving DJ Burns in a screen, in pick and roll action, literally every time down the floor. I want to make him guard in space. I want to see him have to do that. And I just don't think Carolina did it enough. I don't think they attacked and were precise offensively as they, as they have been so many times, not only this year, but especially lately as things have been looking better. Number four, Carolina, much to their credit, did a fantastic job of disrupting things down the stretch. How many, you know, four or five turnovers from NC State, whether it was bad passes, stepping out of bounds one time. The thing was, they just couldn't knock down the shots, unfortunately. Uh, like, typically, like you think about the Florida State comeback earlier this year. Carolina did the same thing. They forced all those turnovers, and the shots just started falling. That's that's what didn't happen here is Carolina got the turnovers enough, I believe, where they could have come back and won this basketball game, but they couldn't hit. There, were, there was the moment uh, just over 90 seconds left. Carolina gets a steal. RJ came down, had a, they were down seven. RJ had a look from the top of the key to cut it to four. Looked great, rimmed out. Uh, offensive rebound, Cormac wide open in the corner in front of the Carolina bench. And that missed as well. And so it's like, it, those are just the shots that even if RJ had missed, you expect that Cormac one to fall. And it just didn't. Carolina just didn't do enough with the turnovers they forced. Um, and, and you remember some of these other moments where just things happen. Like um, there was a, a th three that wasn't that Cormac hit because Jalen Washington set a moving screen. At that point in the game, Carolina was down 58 to 53. So had that three counted, it would have been 58, 56, but it wasn't. It was 58, 53. NC state goes down on the other end and hits their own three to stretch it to an eight point lead. And you're just like, this is not supposed to happen uh, in these kind of games. Right. Um, and then from there, from 61 to 53, Carolina goes on a 5-0 run. You love to see it, and they get a stop. They're down three, 61 to 58, get a stop, but they can't secure the offensive or the defensive rebound. Diara gets an offensive rebound and puts it back and pushes it back out. And so Carolina just every time they would get right there in the second half, couldn't get over the hump like they did in the first half. So just Carolina had their chances. They just couldn't capitalize on them. Well, uh, one of the other issues is that Carolina had no issue or no answer, excuse me, for DJ. Which DJ? Yes, both of them. We're going to talk about that here in just a second. But first, I need to tell you about our good friends at FanDuel. Hey, say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament starting next Thursday. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until somebody cuts down the nets. All right, guys, let's get back into this here. Let's get to, um, I'm actually going to pull up the box score uh, while we talk here um, so that those of you watching this thing can see uh, what happened there. Um, if you're listening, just pull it up wherever you're listening later. Um, okay, next, North Carolina had no answer for DJ. Which one? Yes, is the answer. I mean, both Burns and Horn. Uh, these two guys combined for 42 of NC State's uh, 84 points. That's exactly half. Um, and that's, or no, I'm sorry. I got that number way wrong. <laughs> 49 of NC State's 84 points. That's more than half. Um, crazy, crazy stuff there. Um, with DJ Burns, let's talk about him first. We always know that that's, that's going to be the thing. They're going to go into DJ. 
uh, Burns, and it's you, you got to deal with him. And Carolina just couldn't. The problem is he's such. A, if you double him, he's a good assist man. If you don't double him, he can get to where he wants and finish. Armando had been able to do better with him in the first two games this season, uh, but just just couldn't here. Burns finishes with 20 points, 9 of 12 from the field, but also had seven assists. Six of those were in the first half. So Carolina was able to make him less of a distributor in the second half, just one assist, but it didn't matter. Um, what I thought was interesting is Carolina began, you know, we talked about the hot start that NC State got off to. Carolina began the game by doubling Burns uh, using typically Harrison Ingram. And it worked on the second possession. There was a turnover, but then he started getting those assists and it forced Carolina to go back to single coverage. And it, it was just a weird, uh, there, there've not been many coaching decisions that I've questioned this year, but that was one of them. I was surprised that Carolina chose to do that because it would lead to the potential of kick out threes. And that's exactly what happened. You know, you'd rather deal with Burns to score in two in the paint and, and get those back. So um, credit to Burns who, had enough in his tank to just keep going and going and going. And uh, Armando wasn't able to stop him one-on-one -on -one in this game. The other one, the other DJ is DJ Horn. Uh, you know, we, we looked at NC State guys having played so many minutes in these last five days. Well, here's what you need to know. Horn did not play the first of those games. He was out with a hip flexor, and this was his first time being inserted back into the starting lineup. So that in itself was already like, a, oh, okay. Here we go. You know, like you just almost saw it coming. Um, he finishes with 29 points, 9 of 15 from the field, 9 of 11 from the free throw line. And Carolina did a good job getting him in foul trouble. Um, he got to his fourth foul with 10 and a half minutes to go in the game, but couldn't ever foul him out until like right at the end when it didn't matter anymore at that point. And so um, he he was just an, ele an electric two-man game with the other, with DJ Burns. And um, unfortunately, Carolina just could not stop him. And so got to, got to figure that out. Or maybe you just tip your hat and say, sometimes somebody gets by with you. Um, number six thing to talk about. I feel like this has happened multiple times this year where there's just like a weird, atypical thing that happens against Carolina and it's a bad omen. You think back to Georgia Tech when they had that banked in three late in a shot clock late in the game. And I was like, oh, my gosh, uh, there was another one in the loss. It was either the loss at home to Clemson or the loss at Syracuse. I can't remember in real time which it was. Um, then it happened again here tonight. You had a great defensive possession by Carolina that wound up with DJ Burns taking a three from the top of the key. Um, his first three of the season made it Carolina. This was in the first half. Carolina had tied it at 32 and that gave NC state a 35, 32 lead. And I wrote in my notes at that point, we've had some of those moments at inopportune times this season, and they've been bad omens, some weirdies in the first half. You also, as NC state was having foul trouble late in the first half, um, Ross from, from NC state comes in. And gets just his second basket of the season. That gave NC State a 39-37 lead. And then Cormac hit that three we talked about earlier. But it's like, you see both of those things in the first half and you're like, could be one of those nights. I don't know if you felt that, but I did a little bit too. Despite the fact that I thought, again, Carolina would carry that momentum into the second half and just put this game away as NC State lost their legs. Wasn't meant to be. Number seven, speaking of losing their legs, uh, I had said that Carolina needed to run, 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 and then run some more, and that that could be the key critical factor in this game. And Carolina did that. Carolina led the fast break points, that's point number seven, 19-3, to three, overwhelmingly so over NC State, and they needed to do so, and they did, but here's the problem. It wasn't really a factor in the game. You know, at least not a big enough factor in the game, I guess I should say, because NC State was so content uh, to just keep efficiently operating in half court, get it to Burns, let let Horn or you know whomever take care of stuff in the half court, and Carolina just wasn't stopping it enough. So Carolina would get a run out, and then it just doesn't matter. And so um, it's interesting because 
what I what I thought should be an advantage for the Tar Heels was, but what I thought should be something that was a big deal and a key factor in this game, it just ultimately wasn't, and that stinks for the Tar Heels. All right, the eighth thing. Let's end on, uh, before we get to your comments and, and questions and stuff, we'll see those here in a second. I do want to end by celebrating a couple milestones for, for RJ Davis and Armando Baycott. RJ hit four threes in this game, now has 106 this season. That is the most ever in a single season for a Tar Heel. The other to do it, Justin Jackson, who hit 105 in the 2016 17 season. So we talked about bad omens. Maybe that's a good omen for Carolina. You know, ACC player of the year, getting over 100 threes, national championship. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Um, the other thing is RJ Davis had 30 points in this game. That allows him to pass Charles Scott and Al Wood. And uh, RJ Davis is now the sixth leading scorer in North Carolina history. He's got 2,030 points. Next up is Lenny Rosenbluth, who had 2,047. RJ is just uh, 17 points away from tying Lenny and 18 from becoming the fifth leading scorer in Carolina history. That is absurd. Congrats to RJ. Although right now I know he doesn't care at all about that because his team took an L, right? Uh, and then the other is Armando Baycott. Same kind of thing. It's like, Hey, let, let's honor it, even though it's in a loss. But Armando, 18 points, 12 rebounds, a double-double, his 85th of his career. That allows him to pass Ralph Sampson, and he now is in second place in ACC history by himself, just two behind uh, tying Tim Duncan for the most in ACC history. Also, it moves Armando into fourth place in double-doubles in NCAA history all by himself. So great stuff there from those guys. Again, I know they don't care, and we – Truly don't care, but it. I do want to still celebrate uh, those kind of achievements and look at it. Okay, here's what I want to do now. I'm going to pull up all the comment section, and uh, we'll see what kind of comments we want to look at and answer. And I'm going to leave the box score up so you all can see that as well. Let's start here. Uh, we Privileged Few says, what is the Discord link? Uh, thank you for asking that because I do want to say if you're not part of the Locked on Tar Heels Discord community, you're missing out. So We Privileged Few, you can go find that uh, in the show notes for this. It's right down there or um, I, I might tweet it out later as well. By the way, folks, if you're not in the Locked on Tar Heels March Madness bracket challenge, you need to do that. The link for that will be in the show notes as well. Well, um, let's see where we got some questions. Nintendo, what's up, Nintendo? And says, so we know state brought energy, but did we have a lack of energy and want? I thought execution was lacking, but I never felt like we weren't trying. I, I agree with that, Nintendo. I thought the, the execution wasn't there as well. I thought Carolina was trying, but it just didn't feel like there was that same edge that they've played with. El I, I will say Elliot had a few Elliot moments um, going after loose ball, having a nice uh, steal and some rips that play where he went up and tried to get that rebound over Diara. And, you know, they looked at it to see if it was a flag. Uh, great stuff from Elliot. So, you know, there just wasn't enough edge the entire game and all the time. And Carolina got loose with some possessions. And I think what you find out is in the postseason, you got to remember how much every possession matters. I think that's a lesson learned tonight is you got to be so locked in to every single moment. And it, it's this weird balance where you can't allow that um, be so like, oh, man, like we, we miss that and get down on yourself. And then you're trying to make up for it. You just got to keep playing in that way. So, um, yeah, there is where we are with that. Um, self, what's up? Self says, unless this team has been posing all season, this may be what they need to fuel another six game win streak. Self, great to see you. Um, look, they're really true. I know it's weird. I do think there is something to be said, uh, for taking an L right before the NCAA tournament, like, you know, Houston got blown out on Saturday night. I think they're going to be okay in the NCAA tournament. Purdue lost in the um, in the Big Ten semifinals. I think they're going to be okay. Um, there have been, I, I think I saw a stat. So there's 32 conferences in Division One. I. I think I saw that the, the number one seed has lost in like 22 of them 
already. Uh, it's insane. So it's not just unique to Carolina that this is happening. But, uh, you know, Carolina came into this game. What what was the winning streak? The six to end the regular season and the two for the ACC. So Carolina was on an eight-game winning streak. And they take this loss, their seventh of the season. Okay. You go back to the drawing board, like I said off the top. You refocus. You figure out what you got to do next. And this time Thursday, again, let's render what happened in this championship game moot by how well we play in the NCAA tournament. One seed, two seed, Charlotte, you know, Carolina will be in Charlotte, but uh, two seed in the East, one seed in the West, I don't care. Let's go win basketball games and get right back to it. Um, Derek, what's up, Derek Thiessen? says, feels like the offense never really got into a rhythm the whole night. We need Cormac and Ingram to be more productive on the offensive side of the ball if we want to cut down the nets. Yeah, Derek, it... it just felt choppy, you know. Uh, there were there were moments where things were happening, but there was just like, for example, there there were a couple really really good possessions. There was the one where Harrison Ingram was backing down right in front of the NC State bench, posting up. He eventually kicked to the corner, I think, to Jalen Withers, who swung it to RJ. Maybe it was Cormac on the left wing to Elliott at the top, right back to Harrison for a wide open three. So you had some of those moments, but there just weren't enough of them. Uh, th there was just too much herky jerkiness and um, got to find that rhythm and that flow. Again, as you get to more unfamiliar teams, I, th I think Carolina will do that, but yeah, th this kind of wasn't it. Um, Kevin Ingram, what's up, Kevin? Always good to see you. Says, as much as we don't want them to lose, and th this is kind of what we're talking about, this big picture again, and I just want Kevin to, to be able to be a voice for the people here. All caps, we are still a very good team. Don't give up on them now. We're okay. The last three UNC championships didn't win the ACC tournament, and, and that's absolutely right. Now, because I'm so superstitious, I, I will have to say that those Carolina lost in the semifinals, uh, but still didn't win the ACC tournament, and look what they did, came back and won. So, again, the world is not over. The, the sky's not falling. Um, man, it's okay. Um, Nintendo Nerd asked about still being a one seed. We addressed that earlier, so we'll see what happens there. Again, I do think that the Tar Heels are still uh, a one seed. Um, so, But we'll have to see when the show comes out tomorrow night. By the way, a um, little plug here. Um, Andy Patton, who uh, is my co-host on Locked On College Basketball, Locked On's national college basketball show, he and I are going live during the bracket reveal. So while CBS is doing it, he and I are going to be reacting to the reveal, uh, to the bracket as it comes out. So come hang out with us. We'd love to have you for that. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's get just a couple other questions or um or uh, observations, and then we will move on from there. Um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of things like what we had talked about, about not forgetting the bigs in the paint, not just keep going what you're doing. Um, uh, looks like we got some NC State fans in the chat. Uh, what's up, NC State fans? Congrats. I uh, hate it, but you know what? I'm not going to begrudge you. You won. You did good. Um Man, just lots of, con not much that we need to really get to. So I'll tell you what, we're going to get out of here. I'm going to go get some rest and we're going to get ready for the most awesome time of the entire season. I know everyone feels terrible right now because that's what you feel after a win that you would have loved to have had. But it's time to regroup, pick up the pieces and come out guns blazing next Thursday. That's what's going to happen. All right. Okay. Let me remind you of this too. It's always a great day to be a Tar Heel, even after a loss, because the sky is Carolina blue. That's how we know God loves us. <laughs> All right. We'll talk again on Monday. Uh, we'll, we'll unpack the bracket. We'll start to look at Carolina's path and region and everything that's going to happen. We'll unpack all of that. If there's time tomorrow night, I'll see if there is. I will go live at some point after the bracket is revealed. Maybe just a quick thing to, to dive into it. And that'd be fun to do together. Uh, a little bit more therapy. And once you get that bracket, man, it's just a whole new breath of fresh air after a loss like this. So we'll get to that. All right. We'll talk soon. But until then, peace.